Um, I'm Larry Kenniger. I'm the library system director. I have with me Jessica Jones. We're going to go ahead and start because yeah, people can come in and it won't bother. Okay. Um, she's the branch manager at the Larry J. Ringer Library. I've got our information here if you need to contact us and our website there at the bottom. Um, as I showed you, the website has our events on it, but we also have uh, links to all kinds of stuff, and those are the things we're going to be talking about today. This actually showed up on my Facebook page, and these are things that we hear in libraries that really aren't true. It's like with Snopes, it's false, mostly false, mostly, you know, these are mostly false. There may be some things here that we're guilty of. So it looks kind of like a negative way to look at this, but we're going to make it positive. And this is our number one. Nobody uses libraries anymore. I have Google. Why do I go to the library and get everything I need on Google? Well, we have other things. Um, and generally what we found this to mean is I don't use libraries. Not so much people don't. It's just I don't use it so nobody else must be using it. It's kind of an attitude. We need to make this bigger next time. Uh, in 2015, almost 1.4 billion Americans used a public library. That's a really big number of people. That's more than go to football games, basketball games, golf, tennis, what else is out there? All those sports things that, that kind of run our lives, weekends or sports, right? They don't come close to 1.4 billion. Uh, for our library system, two years ago we had 393,000. Last year we had 398,000, so you can see we're actually growing here. Not fewer people coming, but more people coming. They're coming for a wide variety of things, but they are coming. There are more public libraries in the United States than there are McDonald's. Now in our community that doesn't hold, but when you think of Hearn, they're going to have a library but they don't have a McDonald's. And so all those little tiny communities that have a library contribute to this number. And then Neil Gaiman is kind of a, not a mentor, yeah. he's very pro-library. If you've read his stuff, they generally have a lot of literary references in them, all of his books. Um, yeah, an advocate. That's a great way to put it. So his, this quote that librarians, of course, love, Google can bring you back 100,000 answers, a librarian can bring you back the right one. So we give you the scope of the information, but we can help you parse out, is this really what I need? And in our current political uh, climate, is it real news or is it fake news? Is this really a, a reliable source or is this some guy in his basement cranking stuff out? you know, and he's paranoid and all of those things. So we can help you parse through the, the questionable stuff and get you to valuable stuff. And as good librarians, it's too small to read, but there's a quote for that McDonald's statistic. There's a, a site, so you know where you can go and see that information because, you know, we're all about the information. Uh, the Pew Research Center does a whole lot of research in all aspects of American life, but they're really big on library-related things. And in 2016, they polled a survey of people. Um, people think libraries are important, especially for communities. People that don't come to see us still think it's a good idea that we have libraries here. There's something about our culture. There's something about we all grew up with a library in our community. And so it, it gives value to that concept, whether we actually use it or not. People like and trust librarians. We hope. We like to be liked. Um, and again, we try to provide people with accurate quality information. Libraries level the playing field. We're open to everybody. People come in our doors that are homeless. People come in our doors that don't speak English. People come in our doors with mental, mental or physical disabilities. People come in our doors that could write a check to buy a $70,000 car. We have everybody in the community that comes to see us sometime during our day. Libraries have rebranded themselves as tech hubs. Those lower income people rely on us for their internet connection. They may have a phone, but they don't have a data plan with it. So they come to us, they use our computers. They may just be using Facebook for an hour, or they may be trying to find a job, or they may be trying to write a resume. There are things that are more of an entertainment value, but they're also solid, substantial, um, commercial, job-related type activities that we help folks with. And people still read books. Um, the millennials and the, those younger generations are kind of seeing books, paper books, as a throwback, 
a nostalgic kind of thing, and they're reading more of that than they are Kindle or Nook or iPhone or iPad or whatever. So, myth number two, it's all about books. Books are important. We, we circulate a lot of books. People come for us because they like books. But we also have magazines. This is kind of still in that book category, but now you can get them online. If you have a library card, you don't have to come see us. You go online, you check out your magazine, you read it. When you're done, you send it back. If you don't ever want to turn it in, you don't have to. Newspapers, again, print. We've got the Eagle and the Hearn paper and the Franklin paper and the Navasota paper, but we also have a historical national database you can go back and look at if you're i've got a lot of staff for some reason that are into serial killers so they'll hear about some guy i don't know what it is they're fascinated but they'll hear about some guy in the 1920s in indiana they can go to these newspapers and read the reports of when those crimes were happening and did they catch the guy and what was the trial and all those things so um, lots of interesting things there that'll fit just about anything you're interested in we have DVDs and Blu-rays. It still astounds me. We've had the VCRs, when those began to go into homes, we began to get movies. People still don't realize we have these. With Blockbuster gone, you can still come get a DVD, stick it in your machine, play it, bring it back, uh, and you're good to go. Books on CDs, these have been around forever as well. Now we're getting into eBooks and e-audiobooks. These are uh, as long as you have a library card, you download them at home, you return them from home, you can listen to them wherever you are. I have a, 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 an audio book on my phone. When I get in the car, I plug it into the speaker system and I listen on my way to work. Um, when I'm done, I turn it in, I go online, get another one, download it, and I don't, uh, of course, I'm in the library, but I don't have to go every time I need a new one. Online resources, this has really exploded in the last what, 20, 25 years. Um, we have Ancestry.com. If you're into genealogy, you don't have to pay $300 a year to get it at your house. You can come to the Carnegie Library or either of the other two libraries and uh, use it there. We have Gale Legal Forms. We have a lot of people, they're renting a house, they're renting an apartment, they're selling a car, they're buying a boat, those kinds of things. Um, there are also, uh, if you're trying to do a business plan for a small business, there's guidance in those legal um, uh, databases as well. Newspapers.com, um, the Eagle is there. Today's issue will already be uploaded and, and there if you want to read it that way. Um, Pronunciator, if you want to learn a foreign language, this is a really interactive program. Um, you can even schedule a time to, to online, to have an online class with other people at your level. So if you're kind of in that medium language learning for Spanish, you can get in a, it's kind of a chat room, but it's not really chat, it's, it's uh, Skype, more like a Skype. So you can talk to people, you can practice your pronunciation and your uh, syntax and your grammar and all that stuff. It also works the other way for those people that we have coming here that don't speak English. Uh, if they're a Spanish speaker, there's a Spanish to learn English. If you're a Chinese speaker, there's Chinese to learn English. Uh, so it's very helpful for those people. Learning Express is a whole uh, group of things. Um, again, English is a second language, but also GED training, SAT training, GERE, CLEP tests, the LSAT. Uh, there's a naturalization training and exams in there, so you can learn what you need to know to become an American citizen, take some practice tests, um, and there are all kinds of vocational exam preps. There's firefighters, nurses, um, cosmetologists, all of those people that are, are licensed by the state, they can come here and do practice exams before they go take the final exam. Um, there's also a College Center Plus. You can look at all of the colleges, which one has the programs you're interested in, how are those rated amongst each other, what do you need to get in, do you need a, an SAT uh, or not, what is your grade average most likely need to be, do you need to write an essay, that's all there. And then the same kind of thing for Career Center. How do you write a resume? How do you do a cover letter? Um, what are some things you need to know before you go in and do uh, a job interview? Uh, we even have driver's practice exams. If it's time to renew your, your license and you're afraid you're going to have to take the test, you can go online here, do a couple of practice ones just to refresh your memory. And then there's a whole thing called TechShare, which many of these things are listed on. And that's what this looks like. Now, the, the page that I gave you, um, there are uh, and when you're doing this at home, 
you have to go through a sign-in page. And so the top one here is TechShare and your login and password are listed here. And also for the legal forms we talked about for the newspaper archives. So this is a guide to get you into all of those places um, so you can use these things at home. Um, there's one here, Explora, for elementary school kids. Here it is for high school kids. Here it is for public libraries. Um, first search, if we don't have a book, this is the most lively mouse I've ever used in my life. Um, you can look at first search. It will tell you other places that have the book you're looking for, and we have something called interlibrary loan. We can borrow that book for you. You pick it up from us. You return it to us. We send it back home to its home library. Um, here's some business reference things. Um, again, those, those uh, business plans are in here. If you're interested in starting a business, um, how do I get financed? How do I get started? How do I do payroll? Those kinds of questions. Uh, Learning Express, this is all that test prep stuff we talked about. Here's also a job and career accelerator. Um, there's our pronunciator friend. Pro Citizen is part of this if, if you're into needing to uh, become a U.S. citizen, all the testing programming information is here. Hobbies and crafts, if you knit or sew or paint or sculpt or macrame, does anybody macrame anymore? Um, those things are here. There's a home improvement center. You can change plumbing, rewire your house, pour a deck, uh, repair a fence, all those kinds of things, and then small engine repair, um, motorcycles, lawnmowers, anything with a smaller engine on it. A lot of information on health. Um, just some basic history, more genealogy and the legal forms, and a lot of stuff on science. So these are things that you can use no matter how old you are or what you're looking for uh, with the library. Okay, audiobooks. We have two programs that offer audiobooks. The first one's called RB Digital. This used to be called uh, One Click, so you may see references to that. If you haven't signed in, you register, put in your library card number, fill in your information here, click register, and it will open you an account. When you go back, next time you just sign in. I don't have anything checked out because I'm listening to a book from the other one, but if you have things checked out, you can see what they are. Um, there's a history here. If you can't remember if you listened to a book, these are the things I've listened to lately. Um, all of these programs have apps that you can put on just about any device. I don't know if Nook has one anymore. Nook is kind of not as pop or not as prevalent. Yeah, um, there are a few out there though. Uh, so we deal with those. There's help if something isn't working correctly. And so that's all there is to that one. Uh, our, magaz oops. our magazine collection is also with RB Digital. <clears throat> it's called Zinio. And again, you create a new account, you log in. And you can browse magazines. You can just look at the list of the current ones. We have coloring books. If you're into coloring, that's a big thing uh, for stress release. Um, if you're interested in just specific things, well, we have a child here. These are the ones we have that are aimed at children. And you can download these onto your device. You can keep it as long as you want to keep it. When you're done with it, you return it. And it will, uh, if you put in the right things in the settings, it'll tell you a new issue has come available when the new issue shows up. This also has back issues in it, so you can go back. And our last one is OverDrive. With this one, you sign in with your library card and your PIN number, so you don't actually create a new account. No, it's not typing. No, I'm locked. Nope. <clears throat> okay, for some reason it's showing me my browsing history first. I don't know why. 
go away. Okay, so with this one, there's a search box. You can look at an author title. Um, I like mysteries. You can type in mystery. There are also subject categories over here. And again, uh, mystery. We have 583 mystery titles. Is it going? There we go. So it just puts them in list for you. If it says wait list, that means someone has it checked out. So you can open that up and place a hold. So now I'm number three of three. When that book comes available, I'll get an email. It says you, you can go check your book out now. Um, the good thing about these, you can't lose it. The dog can't eat it. You can't be late with it. It turns itself in. Um, I mean, once you get it, you have it, but then it will come back on its own. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I've got to go to the library today and get that book turned in. Um, so no fees, no fines, no problems here. Um, we have a kids page. Read-alongs for children, uh, new stuff. Beginning readers, there's all kinds of things here for young readers. Um, both things you can read to a child or things a child could, who's beginning to read can, can work with. We also have a teen collection. If you're into dystopia, <laughs> just go here. It's all here. Uh, so the reason we separated those out is we had some, some, it was all just one big list, and we had some parents who were wanting their kids to be more self-sufficient with it, but didn't necessarily wanting them to see uh, a horror movie, a horror story kind of a book, or something more adult in its content. So uh, that's why we separated that out. So it's a safer place for kids to look on their own. This also, we have some Spanish titles, and if you prefer to deal with this in Spanish, it'll, it'll switch it over to Spanish for you, which does me no good because I speak no Spanish. I should, but I don't. So those are the three major downloadable um, books, magazines kind of things that we have. Volunteers can run a library. We have great volunteers. They do wonderful work for us. They save the city thousands of dollars a year because they're doing work that has to be done, but I don't have to pay someone to do it. That doesn't mean they can run the library. Um, we need people that can check items in and out. Would you think, well, that can't be that hard, and that part really isn't until there's a fee or a fine, or I didn't ever check that book out. Where did that come from? And then you need someone there that's trained and knows our rules so that they can uh, help the pe person having the problem. Shelving books correctly. This is a tedious job. I'm sure you worked as a shelver along the way. I have done a lot. Of shelving. Yeah, we've all done a lot of shelving. It's hard to keep up, and it's it. You know, after a while of going through those Dewey numbers when they're seven digits long, you kind of phase. <laughs> it can be uh, difficult. So we have people that are paid to do that. Um, reader's advisory is a library term. These are um, those folks that come to us. I really like John Grisham but I've read everything he wrote, what else can I read that's like that? Or they'll come to us, uh, you know, I've heard, <laughs> not so bad since Oprah's not doing her book club, but people would come up, you know, what else did that author write that, that Oprah's been talking about? Because that book has 50 people waiting for it and I wanna read something now. Um, it's just helping people find things that are there. New authors is popular or genre fiction. Um, uh, you know, I like this kind of mystery. Who else is writing mysteries that, that fit that? It's one of our favorite parts. Yeah. The yeah. Mm -hmm. There are luckily some websites finally that help with this. Yes. Uh, another one is I've read one, two, three, and four of this series. Do you have five? Yeah. Uh, that yeah. sound is us typing in fantasticfiction.com. Yeah. Because they can tell you the order of everything and it's much easier. Materials purchasing. I don't know that you really want to volunteer spending tax dollars, your money, to buy things. We're trained, hopefully well trained, um, to keep an eye on what's popular, what's coming out, who the new authors are. Um, we've got 18 books on beekeeping, but we don't have anything on how to raise chickens. You know, someone has to pay attention to those kinds of things because we have people asking all the time, I want to start chickens in my backyard, what do I do? 
Um, events, event planning and, and, and uh, providing those events is time consuming. It takes time to set up an event. You don't just, you know, we're gonna have 40 kids here today and when they get here, we'll figure out what we're gonna do with them. You have to have things planned. You have to have, to have activities. Even something with story time that we're doing weekly, that has to be planned. The song has to match the book and that has to match some kind of activity. We're always trying to teach kids literacy skills through that, what the letters sound like, or uh, colors, shapes, some, some, something that we're trying to teach the child. We also try to um, plan those in a way that the parents can learn, these are things I need to do at home with my child, so they will have that good, firm foundation as they get ready for school. Budgeting, again, back to people that aren't necessarily paid by the city, deciding how to budget the money. Um, I have to prepare budgets for two cities. I have one for College Station and one for Bryan. Once that budget is approved by the city councils, then I divide that up and we've got three or four people at each building that specialize in certain areas that are responsible for spending those dollars. So that's something I really wouldn't want someone that isn't trained, that isn't obligated to be there every day trying to do. Um, we're open seven days a week, we're open evenings. Uh, a lot of people will volunteer during the day, but they don't want to come in and volunteer from 7 to 9 to cover that evening shift. Um, the Carnegie Building is our history and genealogy center, so they're, they're always digitizing photos and documents. People give us stuff that relates to the history of Bryan College Station, we're really the Brazos Valley. So those have to be, uh, first off, photographs and documents have to be uh, prepared to be stored but we also need to digitize those because that's how we get these out to the public now. They're coming on the website and can look for things. Um, supervising staff, that's what our jobs are. Again, um, volunteers can learn to do this, but this is something you need someone there that's there every day that's available if there are issues or problems. Building maintenance, just keep an eye on those buildings. Um, our bathrooms get a lot of use and I know you've probably gloved up and gone in to clean up some things. I have gloved up and gone in. Um, if you have children, you know that they leak from both ends sometimes, un un unavoid or unexpectedly. Um, someone has to deal with that, and the moms are usually going, oh, my kid, and then they're out the door because <laughs> they're dealing with it at home. Um, classes, uh, technology past and present. We don't just get, this is the newest thing out on the, and then the iPhone 10. That's not what we get. What we get is, I have an iPhone 4, and you know, you're going, I don't even know if that will work anymore. So we don't just know what's now and what's coming. We've got to have a pretty good grip on what was and how it used to work. Um, and again, borrowing materials and returning them and evaluating things, making sure that when we spend those dollars for programming, for materials, uh, for whatever we're buying, that we're getting the most we can get for those tax dollars. And then marketing. This is one of the things, I don't know if you had a marketing class. I did not have a marketing class. I didn't know anything about marketing really. Um, so you kind of have to learn what can we do to let people know we're here and what we're offering and what we can provide for them. You can only ask librarians book questions. These are just a few of the things, legal forms, tax forms. Monday morning, and generally to about mid-afternoon, you can guarantee at least one person is going to come in and say, I need that divorce packet. I don't know what goes on on the weekends, but they're with us on Monday wanting to get away from it. Um, job applications is a big thing for us, uh, getting people to the right site. The HEB's website is the hardest one to find the application form. I hate that H-E-B before. And I think maybe part of that is if, they're, if they've got the perseverance to dig through this website and find it, they've got that kind of stick to <laughs> that we need. We don't want someone that's just going to be here three days and think, eh, I can't do that. So I, I, I want to, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt that this is part of their weeding out process. Um, social media help. This isn't such a big one anymore, but when Facebook was new, um, how do I get on Facebook? How do I make it work? Well, how does it work? What do you mean I have to have friends? What if I don't like this person? Can I get rid of them? All of those kinds of things. Uh, we still have people come in, they're doing that job application, says you need an email address. I don't have an email address. 
Okay, so we get them to Gmail or Yahoo or Google or somewhere and get them started to get an email address. Um, learning English, teaching parents how to raise children that read. I don't like the way I phrase that, but basically giving parents some of those skills that help a child be successful when they get to school. Uh, computer classes, using our devices. Um, this again is Carnegie with the historical records. We have people call us sometimes and say, you know, my, my, my grandfather was such and so in World War II and there are all these letters that he wrote home. Does anybody want those? Well, yeah, that's part of the history of the Brazos Valley. Um, so finding out where those things are hidden before the family you know, throws it in the trash because who wants letters from grandpa? Those aren't good for anything. Um, help with genealogy searches. We did, the, we, saw, we showed you a couple of those online ancestry and those kind of things. Um, some people take to that stuff and they get in there and they go and others need a little hand holding. Back with this. Okay, the state fish of Hawaii. I cannot pronounce this word. If you want to take a whack at it, you can. Um, but this is the kind of stuff we still get. Uh, you know, what's the state bird of Texas? What's the state fruit of Texas? What's the state tree of Texas? My favorite, how many rivers are there in Texas? There are seven rivers in Texas. I used to know them all, but I don't work the desk enough anymore. Um, business plans. Finding an obituary is a big thing. We get email from all over the United States. I had an uncle that lived in Bryan in 1934. We think he died there, but we're not even sure. Can you find something? Well, we'll go start digging through obituaries and those online databases to see if we can find Uncle Joe and, and did he live here. We also have Polk directories, which lists you by your name, your uh, address. Um, what else is in there? Businesses are all listed there. Uh, and we get a lot of this kind of thing, especially in downtown Bryan. We're moving into this building. We want to know when it was built, who built it, what was it originally when it was built. So we can look those histories up on those buildings. We have files on most of them because we've done this before. Uh, oral history is kind of an interesting thing. We are trying to capture people's stories. And we're really interested in people that grew up here. Um, so we try to talk to them about what was life like then. You know, now you pick up the phone and you put in your grocery list and you drive to Walmart and you pick it up. What was it like when it was a general store and not only had the groceries, they had the cloth for the clothes and a pickle barrel and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, so we're trying to get those stories to preserve them. And that takes time. We have a person dedicated to doing that, and that's, that's the bulk of her job, is finding these people and just getting their, their life story, what it was like for them growing up here. Libraries care a lot about fines. We seem to be married to this thing that libraries and fines are the same thing. Um, in Texas, all of those fines that we take come to this building. We don't keep that money. So we're really big here okay, you don't have the $45 that you racked up in fines, can you make 20 of it? And I'll re excuse the rest of that. Because our goal is to get our stuff back. It's not to make money. The money is the carrot, or the stick. I guess it's the stick in this case. Um, and there's a big trend in libraries right now to just get rid of overdue fines. In those libraries, if you have an overdue item, you're done until you bring it back. It doesn't matter if it was due yesterday. It doesn't matter if it was due five years ago. You have to bring it back or pay for it, and then you're, you're back. And right now, we're, we're kind of bouncing that around. We're not ready to, I'm not ready to go there. They may be ready, <laughs> especially, the, I would want to, but... especially the people that deal with it every day. Yeah. Um, we have more arguments over money at those front line desks than just about anything, and this would ease that up so much. Um, so it's probably gonna happen sooner rather than later. And we're behind the times technologically. I've talked to you a lot today about technology. Our computers aren't the newest and fastest, but you do have free access to Office, so you can write a resume. You do have uh, free internet, so you don't have to burn up your data plan on your phone. And we have free Wi-Fi. If you bring your phone or your tablet or your eye thingy, you can hook up to our systems and use them. There's no charge for that. And I went to school probably 30 years before you did. Our technology, I mean, none of this existed. It just wasn't there. Um, we were doing something called FTP, which you had to go to this place. You know FTP? I still love 
and you would, oh, I hated FTP. You would tell them, I need this data, and you filled in all of this formula kind of stuff, and it would send it to your computer. Now you attach it to an email and you send it, and it's done. Um, but it was, that's what I was learning. She's learning networking, archiving, digitization. I mean, it's, it, the profession has changed completely from when I started. Young people don't read. This is another one of those things that we do here a lot. Harry Potter kind of blew up libraries. Um, Saved Amazon too. Yeah, and it, yeah, and in the last 20 years since Harry Potter first came out, the amount of, of material published for children and young adults has just gone out the roof. There's more stuff out there for those people than there ever has been before. Um, again, back to the Pew Research Center. Millennials, back to the millennials, are more likely than older gen generations say libraries help them find trustworthy information, learn new things, and make informed decisions. So to get all that stuff, you've got to be reading something. You may not be reading a book, but you're reading a screen, or you're reading a, out of a database, you're reading a document. 38% um, of Americans say libraries help them cope with the world when it's hard to get ahead. I think this, again, is those people that may not have all the financial means to have internet at home, to have a, a, a brand new computer and an iPhone 10 and all of those things. 43% say libraries help them cope with the busy world. It gives them an option uh, to help get their life pulled together a little bit. Somebody to lean on. We're like barbers and hairdressers. I know very intimate details of people's lives because they come to that counter and they pour things out to me <laughs> that I really don't need to know. But I'm helping them find something and so they're talking. Um, if all I did that day is let them get some stuff off their chest, I had a good day. 49% libraries help them focus on the things that are important in their lives, helps them cut through that clutter and get to what they need. And 65% say libraries help them grow. I think that's probably why we get into this job is to help people. We all start as readers. I don't know of a librarian anywhere that didn't start as a reader, a voracious reader. But if you don't like people, if you don't want to help them from where they are get to the next step in their life, you're not going to make it for very long and you're not going to be happy. Um, so there's a lot of psychology tied into what we do, which people don't realize. And you're doing the same job <laughs> with books. Like social work life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So does anybody have any questions? This was a lot of stuff. I realize that, but we have a lot to offer. Crickets. What was the ebook called? Overdrive. Oh, uh, that's RB, RB Digital. Yeah. I think we have it all corrected on the website. If you see something that says one click. It's the same program, they just decided to rebrand it. Um, and the, the app is much better after they rebranded. The one for OverDrive is called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. And that's available. Uh, Kindle has it, uh, Android stores have it, iPhone stores have it, iStores have it. So um, they're available for pretty much everything. I still, I shouldn't confess this in even this small of a group, I still have my library card from Iowa. <laughs> and so sometimes I think, I don't have it, maybe they do. So I have, I have checked things out from them. So the Houston Public Library will do library cards for anybody who's yep. a state of Texas resident. Yep. So it, sometimes, it usually takes a lot longer to get an ebook via the Houston Public Library just because there are so many people. Well, there's millions on that collection. You can get yeah. stuff a lot faster, but sometimes they <coughs> have something we're limited. It, the ebook thing has been a mixed blessing for libraries. It's a great way for us to get to people um, where they are. But pricing on those things, a, a John Grisham book, an ebook that you would go online at Amazon and pay maybe $20 for, they charge me $85. And they're looking at this going, you're going to buy one copy and it's going to last forever. It won't be stolen, it won't be damaged, it won't wear out. It's always there. So they're trying to make up for those multiple sales that they've always had. Other publishers, I pay a lower price, maybe $15 or $20, but I only have it for 24 checkouts. So that 25th person, either I need to buy it again or they don't get access to it. So the, the 
pricing structure has been hard for us to deal with, um, but it's definitely worth it. And the, the numbers on those have gone up. We started overdrive in February of 2012, and it's just been growing. Uh, the demand is there. That's what people want to do. Uh, it's convenient. It's easy. No fines, no fees. Um, if you get into a book and think, I don't really want this, it's very easy to return it. You can do that in your pajamas at 3 o'clock in the morning at home. You don't have to wait for us to open it uh, the next day. So, oops. Did you talk about the space library? I didn't. Um, this is a program. We're, we're going to put it in the new building if Ringer ever gets expanded. We've been waiting on that since 2008. Um, but we started in Brian, I think three years ago now. Uh, one of the librarians and I went to New York. We spent a week there in this training session, and we are an official family place library. And what that means is on the second floor, we have a permanent play area. The toys in the play area are all stuff kids manipulate. There are no bells, no whistles, no batteries, no lights. It's just, it's wooden blocks. It's uh, uh, a playhouse with uh, the dolls and the furniture. It's, it's uh, plastic animals. Um, there are puzzles over there for kids. It's, it's things for kids to do. And the true goal for that is for mom and dad to get out on the floor with the kid and play with them. Because the kids, at that age, their brains are just wiring all of this stuff completely uh, in their head uh, to, to put together language and learning and all of those skills that we all rely on every day. Um, and the best way to do that with a child is to play with them and talk to them while you do it. Well, what are you making over there on that place, though? Well, what do we have? Is this breakfast or is this lunch? And then, you know, those connections begin to come. And then once uh, or three times a year, we do a workshop for toddlers mainly. So the parent or the caregiver comes. Um, we have stations set up. Again, it's play-based. But we also have experts come in. We may have someone, uh, a nutritionist, come in and talk to you about is it okay that my kid doesn't eat anything but peanut butter? That's all I can get him to eat, you know? Is that going to hurt him? Well, they can talk moms through those developmental kind of things. Um, our society is so fragmented. In olden days, you know, grandma was there in the community and your mother was there in the community and, and women and dads could go talk to people that were right there. But now, you know, grandma may be in Minnesota and mom and dad live in California and here I am in Texas and I don't have that network of people. So this is to help kind of bridge that for some people that don't have anybody to help them out. Um, we talked about physical development. You know, everybody else's kid seems to be up and walking. Mine's still having trouble. Is there an issue here? If there is something that seems to be an issue, maybe a child isn't hearing like they should, or maybe there's a vision thing, we can recommend them to uh, whoever they need to see to get that child tested to make sure that everything is working the way it should, and if it's not, to get some kind of a corrective going um, to help them out. So it's, it's, it's a wide-ranging program that we do. Um, it's kind of funny, you'll walk out, of my office is on that same floor, so I'll walk out of my office and there's maybe a mom and a dad and a kid down there, or maybe two kids, and I'll come back 10 minutes later and there'll be 30 people down there that are doing something. So it's very open, very free-flowing, free um, and it's, it's, we think it's making an impact on, on families and, and on those little bitty ones and their learning ability. What is it called? It's called Family Play. And the it's at Mounts. Um, it's, we don't have room. The Ringer Library is so small, and the children's department is basically a, a puzzle table that's about this long, and that's really all that we have besides the meeting room. So the new plan that we've been working on for two years has a much expanded area, and we'll be able to set up a play area there. We'll send a couple of people um, to do the training in New York so they get the, the real basic and all of that uh, background support information. Um, and we yeah. Have, um, we have a, some workshops that we do called Literacy Starts at Birth. What we're actually retooling right now, we'll be offering them in the spring again as Literacy Starts Before Birth, because we've updated uh, a lot with the research. Uh, but that's for um, caregivers, and we also do sessions where children can attend too, but it talks a lot about the childhood development and all the wiring that's happening and what you can do to um, help facilitate that, uh, how to raise children that will want to become leaders and will become good leaders. 
They have, they have another program called SMILE. Is that's an acronym? I don't know what it. It's um, let's see, special moments in a library setting. Yeah, or it's a library for, environment. It's it's for special needs kids that may not be able to handle all of the activity that goes on in a, a Wiggle Worms or another story time. Uh, it's a little more uh, uh, subdued yeah. in there so that they can handle it. Um, and it's it's not only for the special needs child, but also for siblings, because they can all go in together and we can work with those families. Um, two years we've been doing that? Uh, year and a half? Been about a, yeah, it's been about yeah a year so a half. I think that was really creative. One of our, our librarians came to us uh, and said, this is something I feel like we need to be doing is addressing these special needs for these children uh, that don't really have a place to go for this type of, of activity. Yeah, especially so. like, I, we've done a lot of outreach with those siblings because you know, if, if parents don't feel like they can take a special needs child in, then the child, the other child who may not be special needs is still not getting to the library. So we use a lot of teen volunteers too that are specially trained. We, we find the calm ones um, that we can, so we've got a lot of volunteers. It's a good volunteer to um, children ratio in there. And, they help keep kids from getting overstimulated. Uh, they talk to them, they play with them. So it's, it's been a good program yeah. so far. Yep. Once a week or once a month? It's once a month. Uh, and that one we do prefer registration for. Um, and I think we've got the new session up for November, maybe. I can't remember. But yeah, um, if you uh, ever want to call the Ringer Library for that, um, if you ask for Cindy, she's the one that runs it. And she can give you more information and tell you when our next meeting is. Any more questions? I think she wants some more sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> or to go. <laughs> so, all righty. Well, we appreciate you coming.